The last increment had stopped here at 1041 because that was the end of I forget the name of the guy now that was the end of the reign of the uh, last guy but it was not the end of the reign of the descendant of this guy Constantine 7 let me show you let's put it I guess right here Constantine the seventh is the, still the focus in verse 26 okay Constantine the seventh by 1041 um, his descendants other than two gals have pretty much finished the two gals were um, great granddaughters of his the sons were done by here by 1041 so now we have the daughters left and that's why there is a new see verse 29 whoops it's not in here it's in either day let's just go to it so now this is one of the great granddaughters and that was one of the one of his um, sons okay her particular rule was off again and on again because the son a son would die and then she was left and she had a sister named Theodora and so they would come to the throne for a little while and they'd realize oh we better marry so they'd marry and then the guy they married ends up ruling in their name and Constantine happened to be um, you know the guy who she became see her, her actual name was Porphyrogenitis however you want to pronounce it she was born in the purple room that's like what that's a very important term she she was born while her father who was a descendant of Constantine the seventh obviously um, had kids and she was one of the kids. She was not the oldest of the kids. Okay, so you're talking about Constantine the Seventh's sons, and then their sons' sons. All right, and the sons had daughters too. In this particular case, one of the sons, Constantine the Eighth, had a daughter, Zoe. All right, Zoe means life. This particular gal was really, um, she was pretty long-lived. She was born in 978, which is right here, okay? So she, she, she was um, born after our boy died, okay? So he didn't get to see that he had daughters too. And she's born right about here. I mean, it's really kind of egg tone test, and it's kind of funny here, and I'm not going to spend time on it because there were four kids um, involved in this. But the the point I want to get at is that starting here, the boys are dead, so now it's up to the girls, and the girls who are great great grandkids at this time, including Zoe, are her and her sister Theodora, and I don't understand why, but they were very popular with the people. Zoe and Theodora hated each other. And they were trotted in and out and in and out of power. Depending on who they married. But with the people, they remained popular. So on occasion, these women, at least Zoe did, married several times. On occasion, the person that she married wanted to just throw her away and tried to do that and the people rejected it okay so they, he had to bring her back out she ends up living till 1050 so she's like 78 years old when she dies so that's why this text is focusing on this because her her sister Theodora dies six years later so that's right here so both so the whole line of 
Constantine the seventh basically lasted four generations, four generation curse, and is dead at this point. Now, in the meanwhile, there were lesser kids who were married off to other rulers or married off to other nobles in the empire. And at the same time, one of the good p things about this period is that there was a rise of a, a fair amount of military competence to keep out the Arabs and increasingly to keep out the Normans because at this point, and it started earlier, it started under Constantine the Seventh. Um, not right sure where. That's 959. It, it was already a problem in his day. So maybe because of that, the Normans had started making inroads in, um, all over Europe and they were good at sailing so they started making inroads in Italy the parts of Italy that were under Byzantine control versus the parts of Italy that were under Latin Rome control but they were making trouble for the Latin Romans too at this point and this is 1057 don't forget 1057 AD remember the Norman invasion is going to be 1066 into Britain so that gives you an idea of just how far ranging these guys were and they had come from uh, Scandinavian area and so the military sort of grew up a little bit during this time not for very long but by the time the you know Theodora who dies right at the end here by the time Theodora dies wait a minute, right here by the time she dies the military had, had gone into a series of decline because they had been so successful they stopped you know, taking care of their army. This is like Latin Rome playing all over again. The same thing that happened in Latin Rome happens in Byzantine Empire, but it takes a little longer to happen. So here we're at 1057 AD, and at this point, the empire has started to markedly decline. After the sons die, the military rulers are the military guys are still good and they marry Zoe okay and they marry more than one and they marry Theodora or I'm not sure if Theodora got married but she she used them they used them as lovers or they used them as um, advisors or they married them okay so they were still there but but they were so like resting on their laurels against their victories against the Arabs and their victories against the Normans that they were starting to get slack okay so the text here is really pretty apt because it says by the you know through this even Kai sometimes is translated even and that's why it is here through this even you when you see all this come to pass no that n next angus is usually translated near or soon or immediately but it means next in order it means next in occurrence there's nothing in between so you don't know when it's going to happen next Esten is epi at durais the door now matthew had used that same phrase but he used it in a different <coughs> location down here I've greatly changed the Matthew well by the time you see this you'll know that because I'll, I'll have to start doing those videos um, that same text see next is near at the door was back up here I'm not used to the new format yet it was back up here see Hote ho engos estin tutes alright so that's the same language as we got here in Mark see Hoti but he the order of the words is reversed Hoti Angus Estin Epiturais now I don't know why the order of the words is reversed and it doesn't really matter in Greek really he, it might have some nuance in grammar 
or it might be a copy or just put it in the wrong order. I'm not really concerned about that because it has the same meaning and the same syllable count. So whether it's Eston Angus or, or Angus Eston, you know, take your pick. All right. So from 1057 until our downfall at the Battle of Mans occurred in 1071, the decline of the Byzantine em Byzantine armies was really severe. And so when he says, "By this, all of you, whoever sees all this happen," in other words, the one seeing it all happen. I mean, it's really pretty bald, actually. The ones seeing it all happen are Zoe and Theodora, their generation. Okay, Zoe's 78, Theodora's a little bit younger. All right, and you can argue, well, they're not seeing anything by 1057, they're both dead. Okay, but not all of their generation is dead, and in any given time on this planet, you have four generations alive. Okay, so the generation that saw the change over from 1041 to 1057, that's only that's only 17 years. So anybody from 20 who is 20 years or older would be the topic of by this when you see all this stuff happen, know that the door is near. Okay, well what's so shocking about that? The word door is the last word in the phrase and that was basically the end of the Byzantine Empire. Because that's 1071. That's the Battle of Manzikart. The Arab that was fighting it, um, he's known to history as Alp Arslan. And um, his uh, the counterpart Byzantine Emperor at the time is known to history as Romanus IV. And both of them end up dying the following year, right here at Am. Um, which is really hysterical when you stop to think about it because Am is Hebrew for people and, and the Arab is similar they call it Um instead of Am when you hear the Arabs say Umma it means the people okay when you hear Jews say Am Israel it means the people of Israel alright so the people both of the sides die at Am for Am and Lego Humi Okay, that's 1072. They both died the same year. They were pretty honorable with each other. There was a certain amount of money that Al Alp Al Arslan demanded in as you know a payment so I wouldn't sack Constantinople. And Romanus IV promised he would do it. He no sooner gets home than they, he's been deposed. They blind him. Um, they make him go, of course, to a monastery, their typical punishment. But before they manage to do that, once he realizes what's going on, as soon as he gets home, he, he realizes he can't get the money that he promised to pay out Barslan. So he goes into his own personal coffers, and he takes as much as he's got, and he manages to send it to Al Barslan with an apology, saying, Hi, I've been to poses as much as I have. Thank you for being so kind. And then they blind him, and, then, and, and um, put him in a monastery. And the way they blinded him was so brutal that he dies of the wounds in the following year. Al Barslan gets sick the following year. I, I didn't watch to see if they both died near the, nearly the same month or day, but Al Barslan gets sick the following year. Now I hope you get a message out of that. All these people who think they're the movers and shakers of history, they're just cannon fodder. If you don't get with Christ, God's going to use you anyhow. And then when your job is done, you're done. Their job was to make this problem of the Battle of Manzikert happen because that proved the decline of the Byzantine army. And and historians, if you talk to anybody who's a historian in Byzantine history, they'll tell you that they mark the decline of Byzantium right here. Now that matters a bunch because back here, Latin, Rome, Popes, that's when their decline really became pronounced. And the funny thing about that is it happens right here. Genomina comes from genomai, means to become or happen. Right here at the gen, that's when the Great Schism occurs between the Latins and the Greeks. Byzantium splits from Latin Rome. That's one reason why they lost later, because they don't want to help the Latins. They each excommunicate each other, and so now they're enemies of each other, essentially. 
as of 10, 10, uh, 54, which is what the skin marks. And so it's like, hi, you don't like us, we don't like you. Uh, oh, gee, Byzantium, you're in trouble. Well, guess what? We're not going to help you. We don't care if you call yourself Christian. And so, of course, you know, that was a big sign for the enemies of Byzantium and Latin. It's like, oh, good, they hate each other. Now we can attack either one of them and the other guy won't come to their aid. So that's what happened. The Normans started attacking more of the Latins and they started attacking more of the Byzantines knowing full well that the Latins wouldn't come to the aid of the Byzantines and the Byzantines wouldn't come to the aid of the Latins. So chip, 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 they tick off territory from each side. And the Arabs, of course, did the same thing. Okay, which resulted in the Battle of Manzikert. You can go look it up. K-E-R-T is how it ends. Battle of Manzikert, Alp Arslan versus Romanus IV. And then both of them, they've done their job. Alright? And so they die. Now what was their job? Their job was to exploit and show the weakness of each side, the Latin side and the Greek side, and also one of the primary reasons God allows war and conflict is that it breaks up the monopoly of power in the area where the conflict occurs. And so if you're not on either side, you got room to get out. That's going to happen during the tribulation too. Right at the middle of the tribulation. In Revelation chapter 11, where the two witnesses are killed and the earthquake occurs, that gives everybody an exit window which Daniel 11, uh, 12 had mapped of 45 to 75 days. First 45 days are better, but you can still get out up until 30, 75 days. And nobody in Christendom has mapped it rightly. I, I don't know what's wrong with Christians that their math is just so bad. But it took me like 10 years to work out all the math because of all the errors that were in the hoary heads of the scholars. I mean, I'm sure they're really good scholars and I wish every scholar be paid a million dollars a year. But honey, they can't add and subtract to save their life. Alright, well that same thing here is being mapped. Hi, if you're in Byzantium and you hear about this 20, this 1071, I mean you're being told of it in advance, as far in advance as 1057. Look, know that the door, see door of exit. The door is next. So you're in 1057, pretend you're one of the two people on earth who actually remembered that you're supposed to read the Bible this way. And you say, oh, I'm at 1057 now. Whatever's going to happen, I am to know that the door is next. Door. Why is it called a door? Oh, that must mean I need to get out. It's not too hard to figure this out when you're near the event. It wasn't at all hard for me to figure out that Matthew 25, 11 is talking against Trump and warning against a really bad thing that's going to happen as a result of that. And that's why we're doing those videos to say, well, okay, how good is that interpretation? You have to look at the other chapters that reference the same text, which are Luke 21 and here Matthew 13. But they don't go to the same, they don't go to the same destination as our year 2015 through 18. But at the same time, the text and its meaning and the way you interpret it has this long history. And if I know what that history is, I know what kind of history I'm supposed to read into the text that's referenced by the text. And you'll notice it's the same theme. Here's the door. There's this door that's going to come up in 2070 to 2071. Take it. Because the same thing, all these nasty things I've been talking about are going to happen starting here. And you say, well, but brain out, the text already depicted stuff that was supposed to be, you know, paradigmal to happening before. Yeah, dress rehearsal. Okay? So it's going to happen again, wash, rinse, repeat. And that's why you have Amen Lego Humi next. And this is at 1080, which is the end of the historical voting period. This 1050 is the same text in Matthew 21 and in, um, I mean in, in Luke 21 and in Matthew 25, 24, at the end of it. See? See right here? 
Yeah, see. Mark doesn't play on 1036, but he does play on 1051 and 1071. Right here. See? So he's balancing to Matthew, just like Luke balanced to Matthew. So there's your big clue. Matthew's the first gospel. Duh. All right. So then what we've basically seen is that the, 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 two, the two gals, the two gals, I don't know why when I come back to the window it screws up. The two gals, Zoe and Theodora, were the last of the line for Constantine's you know, progeny, you know, in ruling progeny, okay? So that kind of means that it's a four-generation curse, and at the same time, it means that something was good about Constantine, that he'd even have four generations, because Constant, um, uh, Constantine the seventh, because the first Constantine did not. The first Constantine's kids couldn't have kids, largely. One of them finally did, and then their gr the granddaughter uh, either didn't have kids or died or something bad happened. Or I think maybe there were two granddaughters, and it didn't turn out. They didn't end up going to even three generations, those kids. Whereas Constantine's kids go to, to at least a fourth generation, and there are more kids, but they aren't rulers. They aren't eligible to be rulers. They were married off to noblemen or this or that or the other thing. And from this point on, starting with Romanus IV, um, they don't really get back in power. It's the end of their dynasty. And you can just look that up on the internet. I mean, that's how I learned it. I was trying to figure out, well, what's the significance of saying, you know, that both of the daughters died here? Well, because it's the end of the line. And next thing that happens is another guy, Romanus IV, who's not at all related to them, um, he ends up taking over and he he w himself was a really good military man but he didn't do his homework when it came to the readiness of his forces and that's why he lost at the Battle of Manzikert to Alp Arslan. Alp Arslan then and him both died the following year their job is done Byzantine has been shown up for the wheat peach that it is you know and um, the guy who's the son of Alp Arslan ends up getting into a cattywampus with his uncle who tried to take over after Alp Arslan during the same time and that guy's name was Malik Shah and he will end up through one of his emirs taking over Jerusalem in 1093 uh, I mean 1073 which is right here okay that's 1072 73 so Ain which is hysterical that, that that's the syllable that God would use because Ain in um Greek also means being. Okay, from the verb I me to be. Okay, and it's famously used by John in as in uh, John one, the Lord always is, always will be, and it's the Lord that's talking here. So it's kind of funny. So his territory, Israel, is being overrun by an Arab Malik Shah. At the same time. So you get a lot of meaning out of that if you knew how to read the meter in that year. Alright, so all that stuff is going on. Now from this point forward, therefore, the Byzantine Empire is effectively in a state of decline. And it's going to take all the way until down here, 1304, before that, that it's, it's essentially finished. And during this time, from... 1071 onward, it just keeps losing more and more territory. More and more and more. It is not at all, I mean, at this point it still has that, has um, nominal suzer suzerainty over the territory. But from this point on, it just loses chips and chips and chips and chips and chips. And by the time the Komnenoi com come in, which is pretty much at this time, by the time they start up, and they start ruling. Um, the, the empire breaks. It breaks up. The Arabs just have one success after the next success after the next success, and that's what you know fosters the Crusades. You know because Jerusalem is taken again in 1073, which is right right here. I'm sorry. And then they say, "Oh, we got to do something. To take back Jerusalem." What they're really trying to do is shore up their own crumbling empire. 
and in that case that finally the Latins get back together with the Byzantines to actually have these crusades and then they eat each other and that's another story that can be just researched it'd be better to just read it because I'm not sure how to explain right now how this text interrelates to the Byzantine Empire okay what I really need to do is take a side trip and explain to you why these are shaded what does it mean center because Bible is basically saying the center of history for Byzantine Empire and it is prototype for the world um, ends right here at 940 and I really need to do, spend the next increment on explaining what that means so that you can test it and then if you disagree of course then you'll hopefully tell me why peace out